now a luxury hotel, Oakley Court next door was still used in the 60s by Hammer as an atmospheric location. I can remember shooting in a, in a big room downstairs. I can't remember what film it was. And there wasn't room for the boom operator. And he had to stand outside the window with a boom through the window. And if it rained, it was too bad. He ch chucked a tarpaulin over himself. And um, that's how we filmed. And we, at the time, we didn't think it was extraordinary at all. I think what people really love about Hammer is the fact that they created a series of other worlds. That's what was strange about it. It was a fantasy factory. I like to think of a year like 1960 in this building behind us, where you started off as Transylvania, the Brides of Dracula. Then it became a Huguenot settlement for the Pirates of Blood River. Then you had good old Sherwood Forest, the Sword of Sherwood Forest. Then it became Spain, the Curse of the Werewolf. I may have missed a couple out. This was the first of many gothic horrors to be scripted by Anthony Hines under the pseudonym John Elder and posed an unusual problem for him. My partner's son, Michael Careers, was also producing. He was going to do a film about the uh, uh, Spanish Inquisition. And he'd already started building the sets when he got a tip from the Catholic office here that they banned it if he did. At least I think that's for the story. Anyway, and all I know is I was landed with a set of Spanish sets. Bernard Robinson, Hammer's resident art director, was the man responsible for those Spanish sets. Bernard Robinson, in particular, I would single out. He made tiny sets look quite roomy, and he made medium-sized sets look huge. He had a sort of genius for making the most of everything here. And as you can see, there isn't that much in Bray that would immediately strike one as exotic. And yet he used everything, and he made it work. Bernard Robinson had an art director for certainly all the uh, original horror films. Very, very clever man uh, in making a lot out of not very much. Uh, the only trouble was, <laughs> I was, after we'd been making for a while, I was asked if we could cut down, the, make them a bit cheaper. I was always being asked that. And I said, there's one way you can make them, we can make them back to back. That is to say, we do a picture, same car, same sets, and do two pictures. Uh, and we did uh, a, uh, a Dracula, I can't remember what it was called, but it ends up with him being chased across the ice. It's too late, Kent! Get away from there! It's too late! Why did you shoot him? It would do no good, my dear. Running water. about Rasputin, who in fact dies by being dropped into the river in the river, what a distance of time, the eyes and darling. Had the same cast in both, Chris Lee played both Dracula and Rasputin. All the people were the same. On release, Rasputin formed an unholy alliance with the reptile, while Dracula was resurrected with the plague of the zombies.
an experienced hand with vampires and pirates for Hammer, one of the directors of those four films was Don Sharp. I think it's probably the best thing Christopher Lee's ever done. Rasputin was supposed to have had this ability to hypnotize people. Well, Chris practically developed that um, ability. <laughs> it was an incredible performance. together. The big exterior sets that Bernie Robinson had built could be revamped from one picture to another. But the first couple had gone a bit over budget. Two weeks into the shooting of My Rasputin, Tony Hines came to me and said, Don, we're in trouble. We've got to save money. Now, we've worked out possible savings. There's this way of doing it, and this way, and this way. Each of those would save 25,000. Look at these suggestions. Take them home, think about them over the weekend, but on Monday morning, I want a decision from you. But this was the marvellous thing. He left it to me to decide which would damage, which would do the least damage in telling the story. He left it to me to say, all right, we can keep that sequence, but we don't have to build that set for it. I can put it into a, a set we've already used. This cooperative spirit helped Hammer to flourish at Bray and create their house style. One of its distinctive elements was the music of James Bernard. I've always taken the title of a film and to see whether that actual title gives me an idea for a tune, which it often does. And Dracula was a case in point. All the Hammer fans know this only too well. But it is just saying Dracula. Dracula. 